From traditional dishes to innovative ventures, we'll explore what makes Indonesian cuisine a standout on the global stage. Now to delve more into the topic, joining me, Indonesian Young Entrepreneur Association Culinary Indonesia Chairwoman, Chiquita Virginia. Hi, Chiquita. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, and thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. So, uh, Chiquita, from the data that we gathered from the Ministry of Industry, um, in 2023, the food and beverage uh, industry contributed 39.10% to the GDP of the non-oil and gas industry and 6.55% um, to the national GDP. Now, from your perspective, what is the current condition of Indonesia's culinary industry? And uh, also, I want to know what is the level of demand like? Okay, um, maybe uh, before I answering the question, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to tell about the Hipmi Culinary first. Yes. Uh, Hipmi Culinary is the part of body of Hipmi. Hipmi is the Young uh, Entrepreneur Association in Indonesia, under the uh, led by our chairman, Mr. Akbar Himawan Bukhari. They saw that many uh, Hipmi members, around 40,000, more than 40,000 members in Indonesia, 30% of them have the culinary business. Mm. That's why he wants to create ecosystem to build the Hipmi Culinary as the uh, part of the body of Hipmi. Mm -hmm. So in my perspective, uh, culinary business is growing. Uh, like we see post-pandemic era, it's so many uh, just growing in the food delivery order and online food uh, order services is growing up. And the other side, we see that uh, many uh, people uh, willing to spending to the dining outside. Agree. So, yeah. <laughs> so different. Uh, so depends on our, our uh, footprinter want to tap in. If uh, the footprinter want to tap in in the middle up class, maybe uh, they must be more creative to thinking about the dining experience. Mm -hmm. And the other side, if the footprinter want to tap in in the middle low segment, maybe they must thinking about the um, about the minimize uh, costs. Like, uh, for example, it's so many uh, coffee shops right now doing the cheaper coffee yes. under 10K, uh, <laughs> just serve uh, to, the, uh, to your doorstep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think in my perspective, in the next couple of years, uh, culinary business is uh, must growing bigger. And uh, the level of demand as well will be still yes, high. Yes, will still high. I see. Yeah. So, um, when it comes to uh, the Indonesian culinary space, who are the key competitors, especially in um, Southeast Asia? I think in Southeast Asia, is competitor are Thailand and Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, because I saw that they they have the unique and culture uh, food, and the other side. Uh, their government supporting them to giving them incentive if they want to open their restaurant abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Indonesia must uh, must uh, still have the potential because Indonesia has so many kind of food, which is uh, such as like soto. Soto is a very uh, wide range. Wide range. Very from wide soto range. padang, soto True. betawi, right? True. So we must uh, maybe we can simplify it, which one uh, we want to branding uh, as uh, our. Uh, national food and uh. um, yeah and I think we can uh, do the same strategy with the another country uh, maybe I hope that uh, someday our government giving uh, the incentive for mm -hmm. our food printer if you they want to open up uh, their restaurant uh, abroad well uh, if I may assume so Indonesia doesn't have that uh, kind of scheme yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> All right. Yet. So, um, the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, uh, Mr. Sandiaga Uno, all once said that um, HCI can also be a promoter yep. of the archipelago's culinary in the global arena. So, what is your strategy so that this homework can be done? Because we need a system to do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, HCI uh, already have the strategy. For that, uh, we uh, we regularly joining international food festival, such as in Hong Kong, in Thailand, in Turkey, and we learn uh, for benchmarking our businesses and also the food 
in the another country. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, after the benchmarking, we must simplify, uh, like I said that before, simplify yeah. our food. Which one we want to uh, branding? As well, that our... would be a hard <laughs> work to do. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of array of food yeah, when it comes uh, to Indonesia. Yeah, that's why uh, if we choose, uh, just example, if we choose the Soto Betawi like mm. that, we, we, we maybe can uh, do the uh, spy, uh, ingredient spice paste. Yeah. So we can do the exporting and uh, I hope that Indonesia give the uh, culinary uh, diplomacy mm -hmm. using maybe the airlines to yeah. give the dis discount for the, uh, for the pace, for the pace mm -hmm. to exporting. So uh, foodpreneur, if they want to open their restaurant uh, abroad, mm -hmm. they just uh, export in them. Yeah. yeah. In that case, uh, we spoke to some of the business owners, uh, FNB business owners um, aside, outside of Indonesia, and they were actually um, having complaints and having issues about that particular thing. Now, um, one of uh, your visions, H, uh, HCI's vision, is food sustainability. Yes. With an approach that prioritizes um, the use of local and organic ingredients. We yes. want to know how is it working so far? We supporting sustainability using local and organic product uh, with the farm to table concept. Mm -hmm. In uh, sorry, in local uh, ingredient, mm -hmm. one of our committee member is uh, IoT based local pot, uh, poultry uh, farming. Mm. So they ensure the chicks uh, going to uh, adult chicken by feeding and give the vaccine and also uh, distribute the chicken uh, from farm to the restaurant. The other side in uh, organic product, uh, our an, another our committee, uh, committee member mm -hmm. is the mocha, uh, mocha flour manufacturing. So they produce the gluten-free product and they uh, regularly uh, do the branding as the healthy printer mm -hmm. uh, doing with educational uh, program. Oh, educational yeah. approach. So we are in ACI, we encourage uh, everyone have the uh, business in farming or the healthy printer can mm -hmm. join and contribute with us. Well, uh, me as a customer, we spoke about it before uh, the show that how I felt that the, the, the price has gone um, even more than yes. before. Um, despite that, Today's culinary business can be said to be uh, uh, have an increase in the number of medium and large scale food and beverage businesses in 2022 based on uh, Indonesian the Statistic Bureau by 20.76% yeah. compared to 2021 uh, or with a total of, correct me if I'm wrong because this is a number, 10,000. 900 businesses, that's a lot. Right. So is there any <laughs> program run by HCI so that these FNB entrepreneurs uh, can sustain? Yeah, uh, HCI is uh, have the five programs called Chuans. Chuans. <laughs> Chuans stand by capital, uh, upscaling, access to market, network, and sustainability. So oh. capital is finding the money to grow. Yeah. Uh, upscaling is improving their um, quality and uh, effective uh, for their operations mm -hmm. and access to market to meet them with the uh, potential customer. Network is uh, do the networking for them to the potential uh, professional and also the new opportunities. And the lastly, sustainability is teach them to uh, having the environmental friendly and uh, and social uh, socially uh, environment. So it's 360 when it comes yes. to the program and yeah. helping these uh, FNB entrepreneurs. Yes, yeah. just last month I just uh, do the HCI investment forum. Mm. So we matched them uh, for the foodpreneurs and investor uh, because uh, we know the, in HIPNI so many members interest in investing their money to the culinary business. And the other uh, program uh, already run is uh, about the educational for the Foodpreneur have the restaurant to scale up their employee to have the standardized services. Oh, that's actually quite important yeah. um, <laughs> uh, in my opinion as a customer. <laughs> so today's culinary business uh, can also be said like an um, entertainment business. Yeah.
if I put it that way, uh, where the target market is people who earn a lot mm. and spend a lot. Yes. Usually also uh, uh, they don't have time and need something practical. That's why yeah. they eat out. Uh, you yourself have a frozen food business. Uh, how is that frozen food industry like in Indonesia and also what is the demand? I know that uh, learning from my uh, previous life with <laughs> nuggets and so sausages and stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, frozen food business is growing. Uh, as you mentioned before, that so many people are uh, busy right now. They don't have time to preparing their meals. Mm -hmm. Not only you, maybe the millennial moms <laughs> uh, stressing to preparing their kids' meal, right? I can agree so, yeah. to that. So that's why. Uh, but uh, if we talk about uh, five years ago, maybe uh, uh, frozen food is uh, only for the middle up class. Mm -hmm. But because of the pandemic, the habit is changed. And uh, because of the technology also, uh, right now the price can uh, going down mm -hmm. and middle low class also can consume the frozen food. So uh, the demand is across uh, Indonesia is will getting uh, higher. Higher. I yeah. see. So uh, you still see how, how people in Indonesia would still be consuming frozen food? Yes, foods. of course. As long as the standard uh, food safety standard match like halal, BPOM, and also uh, has CCP, GMP. Uh, I think uh, everyone feel uh, feel uh, safe. confidence, confidence feel as well. safe to use the. Frozen Thank you so much for doing this. We need more responsible <laughs> entrepreneurs like you. Yeah. So Indonesian Young Entrepreneur Association Culinary Indonesia Chairwoman Chikita Virginia. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, much. for joining us uh, this afternoon in Sea Today Business. Thank you. So that was our conversation with Chikita Virginia for today's business talk. You can stay connected with us on Instagram, X, and YouTube. Our handle is at Sea Today News. We are also available online at seatodaynews.com. Let's stay connected.